हेलो एवरी वन आई एम डॉक्टर रुजुल झवेरी आई एम अ कंसल्टेंट इन ऑब्सेट्रिक्स एंड गायनेकोलॉजी एट एन एच एस आर सी सी हॉस्पिटल मुंबई आर टूडे वी गोन टॉक अबाउट फिजियोलॉजिकल चेंजेस इन प्रेगनेंसी सो वॉट इज फिजियोलॉजिकल चेंजेस सो वेन अ वुमेन इज प्रेगनेंट शी कैरीज अ बेबी अ फीट इज इन साइड हर फॉर नाइन मंथ्स so obviously her body goes through some changes because of the hormones because of the pregnancy so and these changes where whenever you go to your obstetrician or your gynec they are going to say they are normal so we are going to discuss these normal changes which which in scientific words are called as physiological changes in pregnancy so your doctor may tell you this is normal so what exactly is normal and when does it become abnormal so when does physiological become pathological is what we are going to discuss so first physiological changes if we have to go step by step are the hormonal changes so we all know there are female hormones estrogen and progesterone so in a non pregnant women they will uh, undergo cyclical changes as per the menstrual cycle so now that the menses have stopped when the woman is pregnant these estrogen and progesterone hormone levels will drastically increase so you may ask me what will these cause so this may cause skin changes like hyperpigmentation hyperpigmentation means darkening darkening around the face the neck the nipples the areola the hands the feet the knuckles they may cause hair changes so there's excessive hair growth so hair growth increases the same hormones once it decreases once a woman has delivered will lead to postpartum hair loss then there will be mood swings there will be excessive there may be excessive mood swings so this is your estrogen and progesterone so in addition to these two female hormones there are other hormones also which increase in pregnancy one of which is hcg or human chorionic gonadotrophin hormone so what does hcg cause so the first 3 months when you know you have this excessive nausea vomiting intolerance to smells so this particular hormone hcg is what is causing the excessive nausea and vomiting of pregnancy so when these hcg levels are very high for example they will be high in a ivf pregnancy because we give hcg to support the pregnancy or in a twin pregnancy because now instead of one baby there are two babies inside so these this hcg levels will be very high so this women may have a lot of vomiting which may even need hospitalization so these this is when your physiological vomiting becomes pathological because of the woman may be dehydrated she may be going into a condition called as ketosis may not be able to tolerate any food so this is when they need hospitalization then there is a hormone called relaxin so what does relaxin do so relaxin as a name suggests it relaxes all the ligaments and muscles in the body so there there is a very typical sensation which many pregnant women you know they explain or experience they feel as if my body is giving way i feel as if when i'm walking i am my gait or my walk is unstable so that is your relaxin hormone acting because of which your ligaments and muscles which were holding your joints in place have now relaxed because of which you may feel you are unstable or you know doctor when i get up i and i take the first step i get a sharp pain this is your relaxin hormone but again if there is nothing to worry over a period of time your body gets used to it as the pregnancy progresses then there is a certain hormone called oxytocin and prolactin so this is what leads to heaviness of the breast so this is these two hormones are responsible for preparing your breasts for lactation once the baby is delivered so during pregnancy you may have excessive painful tender breasts or there may be some amount of milk secretion as well so this is the hormonal changes which happen then there are certain cardiovascular changes what I, what do you mean by cardiovascular is changes in the heart first of all the blood volume increases this excessive blood volume can lead to swelling of the feet swelling of the hands which most women experience there may be increase there is an increase in the work which has to be done by the heart because now the heart has to pump blood to the growing uterus to the growing fetus so your heart rate will increase you may feel palpitations even climbing of 
flight of stairs you may start breathing heavily this is because your cardiac output and your cardiac work has increased now in the first uh, and the second trimester the blood pressure may fall so for a woman who is say hypertensive when she is conceived suppose she already has hypertension all of a sudden she may feel oh now my blood pressure readings have become normal it's not because it's become normal or you know the medicines it's because physiologically the blood pressure has to fall in the first and the second trimester secondly women who are normotensive means with normal bp readings they may the blood pressure may fall so much that they experience dizziness especially when they have to stand up from a sitting position is like when they complain of dizziness and fatigue so these are the cardiovascular changes third is uh, like we discussed earlier the skin changes the hyperpigmentation <coughs> excessive acne and all that then one of the most important are digestive changes which are considered very very physiological but are also a bit of concern to the pregnant women one is not being able to like really eat well in the first trimester when you do not feel like we discussed it the origin of it is the hcg hormone which is secreted by the placenta and second thing is a uh, digestion because of the growing uterus the digestion becomes really slow because of the hormonal levels the digestion becomes very slow so most of these women tend to complain of constipation and that is a very very uh, important concern in a day to day life of any human being to the, that feeling of constipation so that needs to be addressed other are uh, changes in the urinary system so uh, pregnant women are at a higher risk of urinary tract infection because the urinal pelvis is a part of the kidneys are relaxed so the urine stays there for a longer time so they are at a higher risk of infection while at the same time bladder capacity the urinary bladder capacity decreases so pregnant women in the first trimester and in the last trimester they the, there is increased urinary frequency or increased need for urination and lastly i'd like to discuss though we do not acknowledge it so much are the psychological changes that pregnancy brings so you know there are ups and downs there are highs and lows which a pregnant women may go through you may feel that you know you were all okay in the morning and suddenly a low feeling by as the day sets in or the other way around again yes these are also some amount of it due to hormonal changes but also the overwhelming feeling that one may have when you know you've just conceived or you know you're taking care of a pregnancy uh there are so many restrictions restrictions with respect to what your pre pregnant life style was versus now so all of that could be a playing uh, factor and uh, after all this we need to acknowledge that though we consider all of this as normal for a pregnant woman to undergo all these changes in a span in a short span while she is nurturing a new life inside her is challenging enough and we need to support them by, and not just say that it's all normal maybe you're just making it up no they're definitely not making it up but maybe some further tender love and care may help them overcome these uh, physiological changes